In this video, I'm going to show how to maintain the Women's Care Group website. There's tons and tons of resources on how to use WordPress, so I'm not going to go over every single details. However, I will go over some of the more generic um, things that I think you would change pretty often or a little bit different uh, based on the customization to make this website happen. So. Um, Let's get started. So the first thing I would typically like to do is to have two tabs open. One showing the front side of the website. So that's my first tab as you can see up here. And then I have a second tab in which I will go into the back end of WordPress and start making some of the changes. So in order to go to access the back end of your WordPress website, you would type in your, your uh, website domain. Um, right now I am using uh, my development server so that any change that we do in this video um, as a you know test case does not go live because we'll be adding some stuff that you might not want on your website so um, in any case you'll go to your website so xyz.com or whatever it's called and then you would do forward slash WP dash admin now if you enter in the login or the, the login page correctly which is WP dash login you'll get to a login screen like this. Now, if you don't remember your password, you can always try the lost your password and then fill in the credentials, your email address that's been set up. Um, and it w the, the website will send you a link to basically change your password. In any case, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, you'll see basically your main console. It's called the dashboard in WordPress. On the left hand side as you can see over here are all the different options that you could um, do in order to change your website. So the first one I want to go over is content areas. So I'm going to go ahead and click on content areas. In content areas as you can see there's three, uh, three components. There's the sidebar menu, there's the news and events, and then there's the testimonials. So on your home page, you'll see that there's testimon testimonials and news and events. And they're under content area because they're kind of a special area that I've created so that you can go ahead and edit. So if you wanted to edit the testimonials, for example, you'll just go ahead and hover over testimonials. You'll see that there's an edit link. Go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, uh, this is basically your text. Um, just straightforward. You can type in any type of text that you want. So this is a testimonial. Testimonial. Close the quote. And then I put a dash and then my name. And then as you can see from the examples on all the other ones, they're bold. So you can just click on B. And then once you're set, click on update. And then if you go to your first tab, if you have it set up like mine, you'll be able to see your website. And if you refresh the page, you can see that you now have a new testimonial. Now, you can only add as many testimonials as this height is set. So make sure that you edit the content so that it fits within the height. This is by design. Um, and, you know, just got to live with it. Now, as you can see, uh, the text is automatically created, so it's in white, as well as the the um, the name is in black. So you don't have to worry about styles. It, it's automatically italicized for you. In here, all you do is just type in the testimonial, and then the name. Make sure the name is bold to create um, to make it a little bit bolder, and then you're you're set. So that's testimonials, um, and it's quite similar for news and events. So news and events, same thing. So you have your bulb, the date looks to be italicized, and the, uh, I guess the news events is just straight text. So what I like to do is basically copy um, what's done been done previously, create some space, and then paste, so that way I have a template. And then that way I can easily just go in and type what I need. 
and then for the date, I'm not sure if the italicized is going to stay, but let's try it. Oh, it does, so I guess it doesn't if you delete. So what you could easily do is, based on your based on your previous um, copy and paste, you could just delete, leaving a first character there. That way the italicized stays and any type of uh, formatting stays. And then um, you can type in what you what you like. So I could do you know, January January first, 2015, and that way the style stays, and I can delete. Same thing with the text. Delete, and then new title, and then delete the first character, and that way the style chain uh, stays the same. Because if I copy and paste. And let's say I delete the delete the title. Oops. It's possible sometimes that the styles might not uh, change. But you can always find out what the styles are by you know highlighting a style from a previous you know entry. See see what's highlighted. So here I see it's bold. And then if I go to date, I see this one's italicized. So that's how you would uh, kind of basically follow what's already been done. And basically, just go from there. So that's basically uh, content area. So let's see what the last content area is. So now it's kind of now with Chrome, it's telling me that I shouldn't leave the page uh, unless everything's saved. So let's go ahead and save that. And as you can see, I probably have a couple, more, couple new dates. There you go. So let's uh, check out the last one. Last one is sidebar menu. And what sidebar menu is, is on some of the pages, there's a right-hand, I guess I call it a sidebar menu, but there's a right-hand side menu. There it is. So here you see that there's uh, some, some side menus. So if I wanted to create another one, so let's say this is a, a new side menu. And following the conventions, there's apparently there's a plus sign afterwards. I'll go ahead and update that, refresh the page. And now I have a, a new side menu. Now it's in black because it's just straight text. Nothing happens when I click on it. Versus some of the other ones where if I click on it, it goes to a new page. So in order to make my new side menu text a link, I'll just highlight the text that I want to make the link. Now be careful not to include the plus sign because apparently the plus sign is not a uh, part of it. Actually, let's see. Yeah, that plus sign, I think I have to add some spaces so that it equals, so it stays on the right-hand side. So I'll add a couple more spaces. Let's see, let's do one space, see if that works. But in any case, I would highlight this, and I'll cr click on a, a link. And then here, I would then type in a link. So I'm just going to type in Google. If I wanted to open up a new window or tab, I'll check that checkbox. Also, I'll leave it unchecked. Click on add link and then click on update. And then here, I could then click on the new link and it automatically opens up Google. So that's how you add a link. If you want to change the position of each of these links, you would just, you know, delete it, move the other ones up, and then you can just, you know, add the link that way. So that's how you add um, links to the sidebar menu. I think I'm going to have to take a look at why the this plus sign isn't all the way on the right hand side. But should work. Else you can always just add a couple more spaces like something like this and I think that would work as well. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah so as I add more spaces it'll you know right align to, to the end. So that's content area. So any so content areas essentially is the sidebar menu and the testimonial and news events because they wouldn't fall in under the main content of the page, which is what we're going to go over next. Under pages will contain all the pages that you have. So let's say you want to add um, or you want to edit or update the the home page. So that's under home. So I will click on over, hover over home, click on edit. 
and as you can see, the content is basically almost as you know as you see here. Now, this here is an image, which we'll go over later. Um, in any event, what you can do is, if you have a new image to update, you can just delete the old image, click on Add Media, and then if you have an image in your on your computer somewhere on a desktop, let's say, let me grab an image, and let's say I do... grab this uh, little picture here. You can drag the image into this area. Once you see the drag files to upload, you can let go, and then it will upload the image. And I don't want the image to be a hyperlink, so I'm going to click on None, Link to Nothing. Um, this image is really, really big, so I'm going to make it, I'm going to choose one of the preset sizes, so I'm going to go with Medium. Ideally, you would want to replace the image um, with the same size that it's currently at, um, but you don't have to. So in any case, I'm going to insert this new uh, picture. And here, it's been inserted. If I click on Update, go to my home page, refresh, I now see an image uh, that I just uploaded. Now, to find out what the original image was. So let me first delete this because I don't want that. That was test. Click on, the, I didn't delete the other one. Um, so I'm gonna put that back. So uh, let me just change, let me make sure I get the full size because that was sized correctly. Do full size, insert. Now let's say you wanted to get your designer to create a new image and let's say instead of saying welcome to women's care group, you want to make a text uh, change to it. You would just go to add media, click on the image that you wanted to change, and then on the right hand side, you can see the dimensions. The dimension is 517 by 161. So it's 517 pixels wide and 161 pixels high. And you could just give that uh, spec to your designer that designer will provide you an image. Once you get the image, you can, you can easily then just drag and drop. And then select full size, link to nothing. And that way, um, you'll be able to update your, your title, your headers of each of the pages. So I'm gonna click on update and then refresh just to make sure we have everything set in place again. Perfect. Now, let's say in your content you want to change some things. Let's say you want to change some color, some styling. Well, everything that you want to do is in this area that I'm highlighting over. So it's essentially like Word. Let's say I want to change this paragraph. I want it to have a different font. Let's say it's Arial. Or let's just say it's Helvetica. And I also want to bold it, italicize it. Maybe I want to change the font size to be a little bit bigger. 18 and um, one of these should give me color so essentially I'm just gonna hover over some until it says color uh, text color choose some of these Do yellow if I don't like that one I can always choose a custom color do that um, that looks you know different so that's good so I'm gonna go ahead and update that see if the changes have have reflected on the home page, and it does. Perfect. And let's say I want women's care group to be a hyperlink, so I'm gonna hover over that. Click on the hyperlink icon, and let's say I want that to go to Yahoo. I don't want to open up a new tab, so I'm just gonna click on add link. Click on update, and let's see what happens. So I know, so that becomes a hyperlink, and I think it's just using the default link styles that's been set on the website just for consistency sake. Um, so that's good. And um, I think that's it. Um, let's say you want to have a hyperlink um, link to a PDF. So let's say you want it to open up a PDF because I think that's one of the um, one of the notes I put down that you wanted to learn specifically. So let's say well, let's say it's this. Let's say um, I want you 
to be a hyperlink to a PDF, I'll highlight you, make sure I get just the text, click on the hyperlink, or not click on hyperlink, I want to go to add media, because PDF files, you can even do it with images, you can even do it with music files, um, anything that's a media type, you'll click on add media, which is this part right here, you highlight the text that you want to make it into a hyperlink, click on add media, and it, just like uh, before, you drag it over. So I'm going to drag over um, PDF file. So this PDF file, for example. Um, once it's finished uploading, link to the media file, click on insert to page. Um, you just want to rechange that. So let's see. I want it to link correctly. So let's see what I can do. Okay, that didn't work well. Uh, let's try this again. Um, so we have view. If we want this to link to media, I'm not going to upload a new one since it's a, you know, I want to work with the one I already have. But if you want to upload a new one, again, just drag and drop. Click on insert page, and I think I'm going to take the device I told you earlier. Keep the last one there, maybe even the last character there. So I have 9 and Y, and type in what I want, you know, the text to be. So if I want that to be you still, I could do that. Or, let's say I want it to be something else, like... And click here to view PDF. So I'll delete the all. And do click here to view PDF. Delete the last character. Delete the first character. Click on update. Refresh my page. And we have click here to view PDF. And if I click on that, it opens up my PDF. So there you go. So that's how you would, you know, attach. Uh, a PDF to a link and then put that link onto a page. Um, so that's that's basically uh, how you edit your pages. Essentially it's just going to pages, clicking on the page that you want to edit. So let's let's try another one. Let's try one that looks a little that might be a little bit tougher. Um, because your site is responsive by suggestion. Um, so this one would be an example one. Um, so let's take a look at about us. Service is definitely going to be one of the harder ones. So let's go over services because it's got a three column thing going. There's a bullet points on, on three columns and there's a right hand side uh, image. So go to pages and then you want to click on services, edit. And first thing is all the pages have this top image, top banner. Um, so, like, like this lady here on services, it's this. On affiliation, it's this. Well, the banners is done right here on the right hand side as featured image. So, if you, let's say you want to change the banner to something else, click on it. And then, if it's a new image, you know, give your designer the specs 1270 by 445. And then, once you have it, uh, drop the file, uh, you know, drag and drop it into the area, and then make sure it doesn't link to anything, and, set, uh, and then click on Set Featured Image. Or you can change it to another one. So let's say I wanted to change it to one that I already have. So let's say it's this one. I already know that the, the dimensions, that's not it. Because um, that's 372, that's one of the side images that's a little bit smaller. I want something that's 1270, so there's a good. This is another one. So I'll click on that one, set image, and now it's different. So click on update, refresh, and it should be a different one. So, so that's how you edit the banner. Now to edit the content, which is this area here, including the image, it's actually done down here. Each of the columns are separated by code. So don't delete the code because the code tells WordPress to separate these out into columns. What you want to change is the text in between the code. So here, let's say you want to add a couple more. So name name two and name three. And let's say I want to delete these two. Delete those out. Click on update. And we can see that the changes have been made. Um, here. You could just change, you know, keep the first and last characters, probably what I suggest. 
and type what you need and then delete the last character and then delete the first character. Let's make sure. Do that. Refresh. And there you go. And by uh, design, it automatically will italicize for you, which is good. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way to doing it too is if I accidentally deleted it and I didn't know what, because um, this one's a little bit different because it has both, you know, it's bold, it's italicized, there's also a different font size and you don't know exactly what the font size is. Um, everything looks like it's not defined except for heading 2. So what you could do is type text and then you just highlight and make sure it's heading 2 and that will, let's do that and paragraph, heading 2 and that will define everything same as the other ones and then you should be all set. Or like I said, just keep the existing uh, first character and last character and make your changes and you should be fine. Now if you made it a mistake, um, it's okay because as long as you don't click on update, the changes don't won't take an effect. So instead what you could do is just click on all pages, leave the page, and essentially come back to it and the changes won't cha you know won't take effect. Now one thing I wanted to mention in terms of the text up here for your for the main text, there is a difference between a paragraph break and a line break. So as you're typing, if you wanted to create a new paragraph, you press return or you press enter on your keyboard. And that will um, create a paragraph. So let me see if, if that applies to this scenario. So I'm gonna click on update. I'm thinking it might not, but let's just double check. It did not, so that's good. And it might not with, oh, okay, there you go. So actually, a enter is a line break where it goes to the next line, while a shift enter is actual paragraph where it actually um, does a line break twice. So if you're working through your content and you're finding issues regarding spacing, try shift enter versus enter and vice versa. So that's the thing I advise on that. Um, there's a bunch of whole bunch of videos regarding that goes over that. Now I might have add some extra programming to eliminate these issues. So let's see if we have that paragraph we don't. So that's fine. So I guess it doesn't matter if it's a shift enter and enter. So sorry I'm just going you know going through this by the fly so I don't have anything scripted. So anyways so that's regarding pages. So all the pages basically work the same. You just go to pages to edit your pages. We know that th this is content areas under um, submenus. And on the home page, under content areas, we've got the testimonials and new events. All right, so let's see what's next. So we have um, slider. Slider is for the home page. So it's this part right here. So let's say you wanted to make some changes to the slide. Let's say you got a new image, or you want to change a hyperlink, or you want to change the order of the actual slides. Well, you'll go under Cyclone Slider, uh, and you'll want to edit the home page slider. You'll see that there's three slides, and these are the three slides that they are. And let's say you wanted to move the last slide to be, let's make it the first slide. So let's, you can just click and drag it, and drop it to the first one. Click on update, and if I refresh, we should see that one being the first one. So we got her, and then we have that, and then we have the other one. And we'll just cycle through that. Um, in terms of hyperlink, let's say you wanted the first one to no longer go to the about page, which is this page, and you wanted to go to another page. Just edit the link here. Uh, let's say we wanted to go to, have it go to services. Well. You just copy the link here and paste it there. I typically like to keep it clean, so I'm going to clear, clear out the domain. Um, but you can just keep it, um, keep the domain on yours if you don't want to clean it up. I'll click on update so that if I refresh and I click on the, oh, go back to the home page, click on the first slide, it should take me to services, which it does, so that's good. 
And lastly, if you wanted to, um, and you also have the option of opening up a new window or keep it in the same window, as well as some transitional effects, which I just basically uh, kept the default. Lastly, for the images, you just click on uh, Get Image. And again, just drag and drop the image into um, the area. Just make sure the dimension size, dimension sizes are the same. And then click on Add to Slide, and then click on Update. So that is, uh, that's just, yeah, that's it for the slide, sliders, uh, for the slides on the home page. And lastly, what I recommend, what everybody should do is after some big changes, you want to back up. You want to back up to your personal computer. So that way, if something ever happens, uh, let's say your host got hacked or it no longer is in business and you just didn't know, and basically your website's gone, you'll have a backup copy of your website on your computer so in order to create a backup I see that there's a couple backups done but these are probably old what I recommend is to do a complete backup and then you'll just have to wait a couple minutes while the backup uh, takes place so I'm gonna pause the video until the backup is done so now that the video is done you'll see that there's uh, you'll see these two light links um, backup and you want to click on a download backup file so when you click on that uh, this will allow you it'll basically download the website onto your computer and this downloads everything all the images um, all the programming that's done to make your website work um, all the data images etc PDFs and, and, and so and, and so forth so uh, that's basically it for backup. So I recommend backing up, you know, either once every couple months if you don't make any changes, or once after big images just or changes, so that you have a backup copy um, on your own computer, and then you know save it. And that way, you know, if anything ever happens, you can always provide to your hosting or to an, a developer, be like, here, here's my backup of my old website. You know, please install it onto a server and. You know they can do their thing and charge accordingly to make um, your backup come back up so <laughs> that's essentially it for backups um, just a couple of things I wanted to uh, basically tell you of what you can and cannot change um, so some of the things that you cannot change would be the social media icons because those are set you know one and done type of deal so it does not make sense to have that stuff change plus it's a special it's you know it's programmably done um, this call for appoint appointment and, or book online that's a one and done deal as well as well as the copyright down here so if you want those changed you'll just have to hire a developer they'll charge accordingly to make those changes happen menus you can change you can change the ordering um, so that'll be under appearance menus I don't think that'll get changed all that often but if it does at least you'll be able to you know to go into appearance menus and you can change you know what it says by clicking over on one of them let's say I want to change this to you know I'll just do something um, as well as making it you know second so you can click and drag if you want it to be under about you'll, you know drag it under about and you indent in you can do that so let's just do that for now I'll click on save and let's just refresh so whatever that was I don't think it's there anymore because it's under about so that's how you change the menus you can also add pages as well so let's say I create a new page I'll create uh, something called new page new page here I, I'm just filling stuff out um, each page needs to have a banner so I'll choose something that I know was a banner before I think this one was mm, and I think all of them did have a heading so I'll choose one that's existing since I don't have a heading already created so I'll choose that one there we go perfect I'll click on publish so we have the new page um, but there's no way for us to get to the new page until it's added to the menus so the next thing I'll do is I'll go to appearance menu um, new pages I see right here on the left hand side click on that and then add to menu and I don't want it to be last let's say I want it to be after about so I'm going there 
and drag it to about, click on save, click on refresh, and I see the new pages there. So that's how you add new pages. Just know that you do have some limitations on how many more new pages that you will have without it colliding to the social media icons. So just be aware of that. So if I click on new page, well, there you go. So that's um, how you would uh, add uh, a new page. I know that some of them have the uh, side menus. So let's see if I could do that. Um, I think it's on their widgets. Go to sidebar. So I guess it's not there. Let me go back to pages. There might be a second page template. So let me just check that. Go to new page. Ah, uh, for the template, if you don't want anything to be on the right hand side, choose you know it'll just be the default template. Or if you want it to have a side template, well then um, you'll click on the side template as a template. If you refresh, you have the side templates. If you want the columns, I advise you to take a look at the code and copy and paste from a page that has that code. So let's, I know that services has some. So let's go hours because we have a two column thing plus an image on the third. So basically what I suggest is if you want something to look a little bit different that you have already, go to the page that has that, that feature that you want and copy the code there. So this one has, you know, this right here. So I'm gonna copy that plus the image. Go to my new page. Click on edit. I'm gonna overwrite everything I created. No, I'll keep the hours because I know I didn't copy that from the other one. Paste that. Good. Click on update. See what kind of changes that have been made. So I'm gonna go here. Go to my new page, and there you go. And then from there, once I have the the the, the structure that I like, go ahead and I'll just you know edit the stuff in between the actual coding. So that's it. Uh, let me go through the list one last time to see if there's anything I missed. So we went over content and how to um, keep the font size and and its colors and the font the same. I advise just to edit, keep the last characters. So let's say I want to keep the italicized from there. Keep the first and last character and then delete the last character and first letter accordingly. And then editing how to do a PDF, highlighting, and then essentially add new media and then drag and drop the PDF into the window and then click on insert uh, media. So that's how you do that. Um, how to add links to all the topics to the education page, which let's take a look what that looks like. All pages. I'll leave since I don't want to make any changes. Go to edit educations. And I assume if you want to make these links, just highlight and then, you know, link it to where you want it to link to. If this is supposed to be a PDF, then add the media, drop the PDF. And once it's done uploading, insert it to a page that becomes that becomes a hyperlink. And then if I delete the hyperlink, because I think it just always you know uses the file name as the uh, the link. D delete everything except for the first and last character, and then um, type in whatever you like. Delete the last character. Delete the first character. Then once you save it, that becomes a hyperlink to that PDF. And then, yeah, the Facebook icon is something you will not change. I will change it this time, but in the future, you know, you could either hire me or hire another developer to make those special changes for you, those one and done deals. Or if it's very, if it's something that you're going to change pretty often, then you can, you know, opt to have it be um, programmically, you know, some sort of setting to be able to program. Um, do it behind the scenes here, but that wasn't done um, for cost saving purposes this time around. Um, so I think that's it in terms of uh, all the changes that you could um, possibly do on this site. So that's it. Thanks.